Hey, what's up guys? Casting over here and today I'm going to be bringing you one of the most powerful things that I've learned so far in life and that's the power of the ACTs. Now I'm not talking about the ACTs that they prep you for in high school. I'm talking about the ACTs that they should have prepped you for when it comes to life. On this journey, when we're trying to build wealth, when we're trying to be a better person, there's a lot of pitfalls that we need to watch out for. But when you're in school, a lot of the times they're not telling you about those things. And so that was my goal, to be able to bring that to you today and understand, you know, what are these ACTs and how can you use them to your advantage? So our A, we have assets. Now assets and liabilities are two totally different things. When I think about assets, I think about it as anything that's going to bring money back to me. Real estate, it's an asset. Some people like to think of real estate as a liability if it's your own home. But for me, I like to think of it as an asset because my first home that I bought, I was able to buy it right, make sure that I had equity into the property when I first bought it. Then I forced some appreciation on by doing some upgrades. The market, fortunately enough, was in a great state over the last two years as it has been. And I was able to make over $40,000, which I then turned around and reinvested back into more real estate to create more capital. Cash flow. So I like to think of real estate as an asset. Rental properties, they're going to be an asset. What's a liability? A liability can be a car. Why? Because cars depreciate 20 to 30 percent the moment that you drive it off the lot. That's why a lot of people tell you don't buy a car that's going to be brand new. Make sure you buy something that's one to two years old because it's already lost a significant portion of its depreciation, you know, in that first two years. And now you're able to not lose money on the deal as much money. But car as a whole make no mistake about it they're always going to depreciate so that's going to be a liability so you know when you think about building wealth you got to think that hey I need to accumulate a lot of assets I need to accumulate businesses I need to accumulate rental properties I need to accumulate stocks bonds things that again will bring you back a monthly quarterly or even yearly dividend that's going to be making you money now, if you've ever heard about Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, he talks about there's four different quadrants. On the right hand side of the quadrant, which is ideally where you'd like to be, you have the B and you have the I. The B is going to be systems and you have people working for you, but ultimately you want to be an I or an investor. And what that means is you have your money working for you. So how can you start to have your money work for you? What's simple, you gotta invest into assets. The more assets that you have, it's just like the game of Monopoly. When people land on your property, you're gonna continuously collect cash flow, and then you're able to create the life that you want ultimately in the end. Now the C stands for credit. When I ask any of my clients, family or friends, what is credit? A lot of the times I get the answer back that it has something to do with money. And I could definitely understand why you might think that. But for me, when I think about credit, I think of the word in its long form, which is credibility. How credible are you? If you're going to a bank, if you're going to an investor, if you're going to a hard money lender, if you're going to friends or family and you ask them to borrow anything, first thing they're going to think about is how credible is this person to be able to pay it back. So for me, when I think of what is the definition of credit, I think that it's the trust in one's ability to make payments over time and on time. When I loan you anything, am I going to have to come looking for you or do I trust that you're going to make that payment back when you said you would and if it's payments over time, you're going to make that payment back consistently when you said you would. That's what I think about with credit. So when people reach out to me and they're wondering how can they get a business started, they're wondering how can they get started investing in real estate, but they have no credit, they have no money, I have to look back at them and I have to ask, okay, how credible are you? So that's one thing I want to make sure that you're looking at because when you first start out when you're investing in anything, you're going to probably need to build up some credit. Whether you're young, 20, 25, 30, you're just getting started investing into real estate or investing into an online business, no matter what it is, you got to think about how much credit do I already have built up? And if I don't have any credit built up, am I perceived to be credible? Some ways that you could start to build up credit is you could become an authorized user on another credit card. Somebody like your parents or your grandma, grandpa, somebody who you know is very credible. They're going to always make their payments on time and over time. And you can ask them, can you become an authorized user on that card? 
this is some way that you can help someone else build up credit as well becoming an authorized user on your card you don't have to give them a card just sign them up as an authorized user and then if you've had that account for three five seven ten years the longer you've had that account open the better in the eyes of the credit bureaus so that's one way that you can help them there's another way that you can do it. You can go out and you can get a secure credit card. And that's basically saying that you're borrowing against the money that you've already loaned up front. So if you have $250 to give to the bank up front, you can now borrow against that $250 every single month and show them that again, you can make these payments on time and over time without them having to come look for you. Another one is going out to a bank and getting a secure loan same thing you can put up a loan of a thousand dollars into an account and you can borrow against that and you can show them that you'll make these payments so those are a couple ways that you can look at building your credit or rebuilding your credit if you need to but first and foremost understand that credit is the ability to make payments over time and on time and does someone else have trust in that ability within you and the third one is t now when we talk about t that stands for taxes there's only two things that are guaranteed in life I'm sure you've heard this, but it's death and taxes. How much taxes you choose to pay is up to you a lot of the times. The first thing that you have to do is you have to make sure you're connected with a CPA, a public accountant, somebody that can tell you what tax bracket that you're currently in and what you can do to try to minimize those tax brackets. Now for me, I'm not a CPA, I don't give legal advice and I don't give tax advice, but I do have a special CPA that's on my team that every year I do tax planning towards the end of the year and he tells me where I need to be putting money legally just to make sure that I can minimize the amount of taxes that I'm paying. If you're planning on being a homeowner, if you're planning on being a real estate investor or even a small business owner, you're going to be in different tax brackets and you need to figure out what are the deductions that you can use to be able to minimize the tax brackets, especially if you work a nine to five job, because the way that you're operating right now is you earn your tax and then you get to spend what's left over. Once you become a business owner, since this world is revolved around ownership, you earn, you spend, and then you get taxed on what's left over. So again, talk to your CPA about it, go network, connect with the CPA, tell them what you're trying to accomplish, and you're going to be able to be so much further ahead than where you ever thought because you'll be able to have extra money in your pocket and you've created passive income. Think about it. Whenever you get started on your journey to be a better you, be a better business owner, you got to understand that the power is in the ACTs. You have to own assets to be able to create capital income coming in for you. You have to have good credit, some type of credit, to be able to show people that you're credible and if you borrow something that you can make those payments back on time and over time. And the third one is taxes. You got to understand where you are in this current tax bracket, what you need to do to be able to get more deductions and be able to pay yourself first and keep more of that money in your pocket. So it's Casanova coming at you as always. If you've gotten anything out of this, make sure that you subscribe, you like, you share, drop a comment. Let me know have you ever heard of these before and what are the things that you try to focus on i would love to hear your tips as always as well talk soon remember in the dream we trust